Look, who don't like a little THC that can help you sleep, help you relax, less sore, calm you down? Look, Mood is known for their federally legal THC, and now they're adding their most potent product yet to the lineup. Introducing hemp-based THCA flower, the future of legal THC. Try it along with all of Mood's other amazing offerings like gummies, vape cartridges, and more. And guess what? Try Mood's new THCA flower today, and for 20% off your first order and a free THCA pre-roll, go to hellomood.com and use promo code DUDES. That's hello, M-O-O-D.com, code DUDES for 20% off your order and a free THCA pre-roll. Who's down for a little roulette or some slots or some more fun exclusive games? Download the DraftKings Casino app now and use code DUDEFOODS. New players get an instant deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. That's code DUDEFOODS only on DraftKings Casino. The crown is yours. Got a gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 plus. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and other restrictions apply. One per new customer must opt in and make minimum $5 deposit within seven days, 168 hours, or registering new account. Max match $100 in casino credits, which require one-time playthrough within seven days, 168 hours. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash new player offer 2024. <laughs> Behind the foods, yo, it's the dudes. Behind the foods, the dudes. Behind the foods, yeah, it's the dudes. Behind the foods, that's actually really fucking good. Oh, oh. good morning, everybody. Good motherfucking morning. <gasps> Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. This one of your theater songs again? I've got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. Mm -hmm. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye, and it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. What is that theater? Uh, what is this? What production this is this? This is Oklahoma. Okay. <laughs> A <little> theater nerd. <laughs> I think I'm just going to randomly sing songs from Oklahoma for this whole hour, okay? Do you still remember all the songs? For the most part. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, you know, when you do musicals, uh, I mean, in high school, and just all you know, like you're there, you're rehearsing every fucking day leading up to it, right? So you're just there every day, a bunch of horny little high school kids <laughs> singing and dancing and feeling each other up. It's a bunch old. of Oklahomas, you know? Oh, fire! I was literally just talking to Rick about like, damn man, because I sent him this TikTok. Uh, it said like, oh, he got rizzed up in front of in front of everybody, and mm -hmm. this dude is being. This dude and this girl are being filmed from a bus, okay. like like the school bus, and I guess they aren't realizing that there's kids on the bus because the bus is parked. Uh, high school kids, they're all high school kids, and this girl like kind of pushes this dude against the wall and like kisses him, and he looks all like, oh shit, and then everyone on the bus is like, oh shit, right? And Rick is like, damn, remember when girls were aggressive in high school and we were so inexperienced that we got fucking uncomfortable <laughs> and didn't do shit about it? And wow. I remember specifically in drama musical rehearsal i forgot what i said i was a fucking sophomore this girl was a senior and i forgot we were just kind of fucking around like joking with each other and she was like oh really and she grabbed my dick grabbed my pack and she was like oh yeah how about now and i was like stop ah, yeah. <laughs> I know what she was like. Ah. I'm not ready. Yeah, <laughs> man, you the fucking this little fucking fifty year old like. Ah. Well, she's definitely experienced, that's for sure. <sighs> the well, good that old stuff day. has never happened to me, so it's <laughs> nice hearing that you know this happens to other men. But that's crazy. What's that feel like to be wanted? Um, it's fun, dude. All right. Well, here's the, you know here's the thing. Um, I'm just a girl who can't say no. Kissing's my favorite food. Oklahoma as well. The hell? With or without the mistletoe, I'm in a holiday mood. Ten years, I have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but here's the thing, David. So you have been wanted. 
I think you've not been wanted school. a lot. Ah, okay. Not in high school. And I understand. A little, a little stinky little anime kid. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, <laughs> I just uh, didn't know what I wanted. Well, here's the thing. Like, in high school, too, I, to be honest with you, I would say compared to most guys, mm. I didn't really focus on the girl part as much because mm. I only had a crush on one girl. So mm. I wasn't, like, trying to do all that. And I was, like, a church boy, too. Mm. So it was, it was kind of, like, not there. You know what I mean? I was doing missionary trips. I was helping kids out in Mexico and Tijuana. Mm. And then, you know, got the guy. Lame! <laughs> Repeat joke. Bring it back. Uh. And then a, when I was in Mexico, I told this little kid, I was like, I'm here to help you. He goes, are you gay, sir? <laughs> you are in America where there's pussy abundance. And you're here helping me. Gay? <laughs> he's like, he's like hey, you is hotto? <laughs> no, I'm a missionary. <laughs> um, that's speaking of church folk being horny. Similar story. Of, like, being just an inexperienced boy, freshman year, there's this girl in my class. Um, I, this is when I was going to a Catholic school, Catholic school. So, uh, all the girls were stupid horny, right? That's just how it is at Catholic school. Like, you know, all that, you tell all them that no, they repressed, walk yeah, that repressed sexual energy, right? Um, and there's this one girl named Anne Marie. And I remember I just didn't know how to react to her horniness. I was so just not used to it. And I look back now and like, oh, she was throwing me mad hints. Like she would be telling her friend a story like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then I was at the movies with Jacob and like he sucked my boob. And I'm, I remember thinking like, why are you saying that so loud? Oh, my God. People can hear you. <laughs> and then one time we were watching. And then one time she had like a little pen with a pen cap. And she's like, Tim, look. And she's like putting it inside the pen cap. I was like, ha, ha, ha. She wanted to fuck. Bro, I know. And back then, I was, you know, still a virgin and shit, uncomfortable. Yeah, I was horny, but I didn't know how to react to that shit. One time we're walking out of class. She was in front of me. She stopped, put her little booty on me. And I'm just kind of like, ah, you stupid, right? <laughs> but like, I'm looking back now. I'm like, damn, she could have taken my virginity next to the next to the confessional or something. You know, you know what's interesting? <laughs> like, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But at the same time, I feel like... I wouldn't know what to do as an adult. <laughs> like, when you're young, too, it's like, you, you just don't know. Because if it's, like, the first time, how are you supposed to know? I know, right? I know. And you don't know. what. And also, too, like, as a young guy, you're also insecure. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to assume. I know. I you know, know what I mean? But and as you get older, you just be assuming too much. You assume everything. <laughs> you assume. You take everything. It's like, oh, she wants my dick. <laughs> oh, it's the man. the concierge of the hotel. <laughs> Do you need someone to bring your bags up for you? What would you, what you mean by that? <laughs> here, here are your hotel keys. Like, you trying to fuck? <laughs> oh, man, such a weird... There's an episode, oh, and, and plus now, I feel like if we were out in the dating world now, it's so different because you're not even... You can't assume nowadays, right? Yeah. There's an episode of South Park where... This girl, it's like a frat party. Everyone's like drinking and shit. And this girl's talking to this like football player. She's like, "Hey, um, so, uh, what do you what do you think? I think what you might maybe I want you, you know maybe you should take me back to your room tonight, you know, and we can you know whatever." And the guy's like, "I'm gonna need you to give me clear and concise <laughs> consent that we are that this is that you want to have sex tonight." She's like, "Well, you know, maybe play your cards right." He's like. Uh, once again, I'm going to need you to be completely clear, clear that you are consenting to my sexual advances. <laughs> You're so funny. So uh, I was talking, this is a uh, this is a while back, with a homegirl of mine. And then, you know, the topic of like, uh, you know, the whole Me Too thing that was happening too. And then we were talking about like being consensual. And this girl's she's fucking funny, by the way. Mm. And she's like, you know that consent shit? That's just so whack. Oh, oh my God. I was, like, I was like, what do you mean? And it's not as bad as you think it is. She's like... <laughs> She was like, I would. She said, I would fucking hate if me and a dude are like flirting with each other, right. and then like we're about to fuck, and then right before we're about to fuck, he goes, "Can I?" Right. And she's like, that would ruin the fucking moment. I know. And I, know. I think I know what she's talking about. It's just like sometimes, like guys, I think like creepy dudes don't have that wherewithal where mm -hmm. there's like, okay, there are things that you could do with a woman, but there has to be rapport first that leads up to this. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And some guys are just so fucking creepy and weird they don't get it. But I understand what she's talking about. It's like, what if every time we're about to fuck, a guy stops and goes, can we fuck? She was my pussy would dry up so fast. Well, I know, I know multiple girls who, like, 
even a couple girls who I've I've like canoodled with in the past, they like to. I like that word by the way. <laughs> canoodled. They like to s- pick fights because they enjoy the fucking the like little, yeah. the tussle mm-hmm. that you play fighting and then yeah. you kiss and shit like that. And they like the you know the like the the dance. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, but it's like um. It's it's it's, it's a, like the wanting to be wanted but not being too much type of thing. It's like stop. Yeah, yeah. like the whole you know, I dated somebody who like thought it was so hot if you like um just kinda like, you know, like if she's like walk if you're fighting and then she like grab her arm and you kiss, she thought it was like the hottest shit, right? And I, I used to mess with a girl who would play fight with me so much leading up to like whatever sexual things we were doing, I would like I would give up. Yeah. Because I'm like, all right, how long are we going to do this, man? <laughs> but like, because I'm, I'm like, I don't, I'm sick. She puts boxing gloves on you. <laughs> <laughs> or she's doing like this. She's like, I'm like, I'm like trying to like kiss her neck and shit. And she, she like grabs me. She's like, pussy. You fucking <laughs> pussy. You a bitch. And I'm just like, I don't, you know what? I can't do this. <laughs> Meet me at the park. New York girls. Hey, you fucking Pussy. <laughs> Where you finna be at 3 p.m. at the park? Because I'm trying to fuck, little boy. <laughs> Bring your crew, I'll be my crew. <laughs> like, are we fucking or are we fighting? Uh, no, it's foreplay. So it, was, it was a time where I'd be like, I, just, she, I think she kind of felt me like kind of be like, all right, man, enough. And then like, she was like, all right, then, you know, like, she like then we we did the do, but it was still like, God, man. This is so long. It's so tiring. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand foreplay and stuff like that, but that's, that's a lot. That's and, a lot. And plus... Supposing that I said that your lips were like cherries or roses or berries, what you gonna do? I'm allergic to <laughs> all of those. <laughs> this uh, Oklahoma is pretty uh, sexual, huh? Super sexual, yeah, yeah. A lot of sexual jokes. What, what's it too. about? Um, it's basically about uh, like a dude that is in love with a girl who um, is like. It's it's two guys after one girl and um, it's a bunch of shit going on. It's like um, country western love triangle type shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think that song, that Christmas song, the "I really can't stay, baby, baby it's cold, cold outside, outside," is yeah, that yeah. a little creepy? Because a lot of people have been doing saying that it's kind of creepy. I think context matters. Yeah, and I think yeah, if you take the lyrics at face value. It can be a little creepy and, as they say, rapey, right? Yeah. But I think when you look at the actual even video of it. They're, like, flirting with each other. They're flirting. They're fucking around. They're playing around. You know what I'm saying? So I don't – I think when you look at it that way, it's not – it's not cringy rapey, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, And, uh, you know, I think they're just – they're just – they're just – just having some jokes and some giggles with each other. I really can't stay, bitch, stay inside. <laughs> bitch, you better not fucking leave. <laughs> I got to get away. I got handcuffs in the room. <laughs> I actually, um, I'm trying to do, I've been trying to do it for years. I just always never get around to it. Um, I'm writing a, like a funny version of that. Um, and, but it's every time I'm like, oh shit, okay, yeah, I gotta write my version of uh, Baby It's Cold Outside. It's like December 15th. <laughs> Like, that's I'm too late. This, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, this is not. That was enough. the thing about like YouTube back in the day. We would do like Halloween sketches, mm-hmm. Valentine stuff. But I would always do that shit. I'm like, all right, cool. Christmas is coming up. December 24th is today. Yeah. What the fuck <laughs> do I do? Bro, it's so stupid. I think there was one year I was like, I'm gonna get ahead of this shit. I'm going to map out a whole calendar of sketches. I'm going to look at what the big movie premieres are each month. Make sure I have a skit ready to go that's going to come out the same time the movie comes out. So I hit that fucking search engine. That was last year. And I did one sketch. That was last year. Yeah. We did one sketch. (laughs) And then that was it. And you were so hyped. Ah. And I was like, well, I guess no more sketches. (laughs) Fuck. Oh, yeah. We did that skit for the Magic mic. Yes, that was literally last year. Tim. Wow. Well. <laughs> so, when it comes to writing, this guy will find anything to just navigate around it. Hey, hey. I did one. <laughs> Rick was saying yesterday, this was just like, all right, I got to write, but man, I got to study to be a heart surgeon, so I got to just push that aside. You'll do absolutely anything. <laughs> well, fuck, man. Um. I, you know, it's I, hard, man. I get it, though. You get it. I have been trying to get back to writing this movie. Um, I haven't touched it in like weeks, but um, 
And now, you know, I kind of fucked myself up a little bit because, you know, recently my boy Super Ego, Super Ego did a event with like the Laugh Factory where he tried doing stand up with Petey Flo and a couple other homies. And um, they did great. And so since they sold out, you know, the Laugh Factory was down for them to do some more events. So he's like, hey, bro, you want to, he hit me. He's like, yo, you want to do uh, Laugh Factory in April in Long Beach? And I was like, yeah, all right. So now I'm like, how exciting, man. <laughs> you get that weird little uh, feeling in your gut before, right before you go stay, go on stage. And I probably haven't tried to do stand up. I've probably done one open mic night. This is like 10 years ago. I mean, honestly, you know that, you know, that, that game show that we did, that's essentially stand up, dude. It's not, it, it's not much different. It's just that what we were doing was just more off the cuff crowd work shit. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Is, a, a huge part of stand up, anyways, depending on what type of stand up that you are. So you already kind of done it. I mean, I'm I, I like the crowd. <clears throat> I like fucking with people, making people laugh. Um, crowd work is is fun for me. Um, that's pretty much what the No Chaser Live is gonna be. Yeah, you know it's, what I'm you've already done it before. Um, I'm just I'm excited to kind of try my hand at actually formatting setupy punchliney jokes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I got some shit jotted down. Eric was like. I'm like, how, how long are you doing? He's like, I'll probably do like, I don't know, like 15, 20 minutes. Oh, that's and I was, long. I was like, bro, I'm going to give you a strong 10. <laughs> if yeah. that, all right? It's my first time, okay? I think so. like, it's hard. Like sometimes like when you go up and they give you fi five minutes, if you if you have a set going, five minutes can seem really short mm. because you're you're trying if you're trying to story build. Mm. If you're doing like quick jokes, five minutes is great. Uh, if you're trying to do story building, 10 minutes is like a good sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Once you get to like the 15 and 20, you have to be kind of prepped, right? right? And sometimes when you start forgetting material, you start doing crowd work or that kind of takes up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. If it's just a set five minutes, just get right into it. Make your fucking jokes. Stop. A lot of, lot of a big mistake that a lot of like young comics will do is they'll, they'll go up on stage and then they'll, it's like, what's the fucking joke? You got five minutes. Right. And they right, try to do right. this long, it's like, you got to make people laugh. It's five minutes. Oh yeah. Nah, 10 nah. minutes, you have a little more time. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm curious. I'm, I'm excited. Um, you know, I'm going to try not to let it uh, get in the way of my movie writing too much. It's only one set. If, if you <laughs> use this to not write for a whole year, I would be fucking shocked, dude. <laughs> like this, dude, I had a 10 minute set in, in January, so I can't write this movie. <laughs> I'll be shocked, dude. No, 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 no. The, the movie will get written. I know y'all are sick of hearing about it, so let's not even talk about it anymore. Okay. Okay. Next time you hear about this shit, it's going to be at least, it's going to be written. All right. In, all three, right? in three years. <laughs> in three years. We're going to take a break. We're going to time travel. See if the movie's done, and then we'll come back and let you know what's good. All right? Y'all know me. I have trouble focusing sometimes, and that's why I started effing with Mood, and I was pleasantly surprised. Mood is known for their federally legal THC, and now they're adding their most potent product yet to the lineup, all right? For a limited time, Mood is giving our listeners a free THCA pre-roll and 20% off your first order. Just visit hellomood.com and use our code DUDES, all right? I'm talking about they got hemp-based THCA flower, the future of legal THC, and you can try it along with all of Mood's other amazing offerings like gummies, vape cartridges, and more, okay? Look, your boy doesn't even smoke. But when I heard I could have a little something to help me stay focused after a long day of playing with these babies and I need to stay up and write this script, I was like, let me try it out. And I was pleasantly surprised by how much work your boy actually got done. Okay, now check me out. The packaging is beautiful. It's delivered super fast. And, uh, you know, they got all types of things for you. I'm talking about everything from great tasting gummies, classic flour, convenient pre-rolls, and so much more. It's great for both beginners and veteran users, all right? So try Mood's new THCA flour today. And for 20% off your first order and a free THCA pre-roll, go to hellomood.com and use promo code DUDES. That's hello, M-O-O-D.com, code DUDES for 20% off your order and a free THCA pre-roll. Hey, we just got back from the future, and uh, it's, 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 not, it's not done. <laughs> it's not done, but I am divorced, so <laughs> fuck. Beta hates me, <laughs> and Q lives with me, but he hates me too. <laughs> you deadbeat-ass dad. No! Oh, my God. So, well, I did this. we said we're going to bring this up on this podcast, and it's just like, so I, I recently... I, I dropped my car off. At, uh, I, yes. Yes. <laughs> I dropped my car off at Tim's place right? because I was going to LAX to go to Hawaii. Whole fucking flight situation happened where basically I had to switch airports and 
I had to drop off my car at his house. I come back to go get my car. And listen. Do you want a piece of cinnamon cake? No, I'm okay. Okay. I, I don't like cinnamon. I already told you that. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, go ahead. Oh, God, you don't know me at all. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> now, when you get older, right, like the ability to, I mean, for me anyways, like to piss me off, like enough to get into a physical altercation, <laughs> it's really hard, mm -hmm. right? Because it's just, I don't like it. I really don't like feeling angry. I don't like getting riled up like that. Yeah. I don't like feeling some when you're younger, you kind of take everything as a challenge. As you're older, you start giving people a lot of grace, right? Mm. Ah, maybe he had a bad day or whatever. So mm -hmm. me and my buddy Joe <clears throat> were in the taxi. Me and my buddy Joe and his wife were in this taxi. We're about to go into this taxi. Long story short, with this, this taxi driver <laughs> is fucking ridiculous. Like, I'm giving, I'm telling them his address to get there, right? And he goes, where is it? I give him the address. He goes, where is it? Just like that. Mm. He's like yelling. And okay. I'm like, I give him the address again. He goes, where is it? This like, was a taxi or an Uber? Taxi. Oh, well, of course it was a, yeah, okay. Yeah. Go on. So I'm like, is he dumb? Mm. Like I'm giving him the address. He goes, is it in Los Angeles? I'm like, <clears throat> so I say to him, just put it in your phone. Yeah. And then take us there. He goes, well, how do I get there? <laughs> Talk. That what? Taxi driver says, I shit you not verbatim. How do I get there? I'm like, you're the driver. I don't know. Yeah. First of all, what if I was, if I just, if I'd never been to LA? Yeah, what how the, the fuck? How the fuck would I know? First of all, why doesn't he just know how to use his phone? Second of all, if you're not an Uber driver, taxi drivers are supposed to fucking know everything. Exactly. <laughs> like, I've, every time I've been in a taxi, yes. I tell them somewhere, they go, got it. Yeah. No GPS. They'll be like, oh, that's over by blah, blah, blah. And they just go. Yeah. And then if they're in the general area, he goes, if, well, and if they need a specific spot, then they'll plug it in. But yep. they know the general area. Mm -hmm. So this guy's already yelling at me. And mm -hmm. I'm not even exaggerating. You could ask those, the, uh, Joe and Hattie, he was yelling. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm like, okay. I grab the phone and under my breath, I'm like, you fucking idiot. Because I'm like irritated because he's like super disrespectful towards mm -hmm. me. This fool starts zigzagging through traffic, driving like crazy, <laughs> flipping people off, calling them motherfuckers. <laughs> he's like this older Armenian guy. Motherfucking bitch of mother of bitch. Like sit like that. Oh. And so he takes us like three minutes from the airport and he stops. And I'm like, where is this? He goes, we're here. I'm like, no, we're not. And he goes, yes, we are. Screaming. I'm like. Now I'm starting to get pissed. Right, right, right. Because right. number one, I feel like this guy's like putting my life in danger. Yeah. And so Joe was like, hey, you know what, sir? You've been like super disrespectful. Uh, this is not even the location. We're just going to get off. He goes, pay me. Where's my money? Pay me. And we're like, this is not the spot. Yeah. Right. And he showed, he goes, look, this dumbass mm -hmm. put in two other addresses before ours. So mm -hmm. he was going to two other spots before our spot. Dumb. So I physically put in the address, but he didn't cancel his other two stuff. Right, right, right. So he's screaming at us to pay him. Mm -hmm. And at this point, like, I fucking had enough, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you dumb motherfucker. Like, <laughs> are you fucking stupid? Yeah. Look at your fucking phone. Yeah. Like, you fucking took us to the wrong spot. <laughs> and he's screaming at us. I'm like, open the fucking trunk. We're leaving. Yeah. He won't open the trunk. Mm. Because he wants to get paid. He wants to get paid for a for a fucking three mile drive, mm -hmm. and I'm like, that he dropped us off in an alleyway. Silly. And so at this point, Joe is telling him like, open the fucking trunk, and Joe's staying in the car so he can't just leave with our stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, fuck this. So I get over to the other side. I'm like, give me your fucking phone. Yeah. I'm like, do you see this? This is my address. These are two other addresses that you fucking took us to. Yeah. This is the wrong spot. And he's like cursing at us or whatever. He won't <laughs> open the trunk. He gets out the car and he fucking tries to swing at me. Oh, Lord. Now, look at this. At this point, the guy's 50-something years old, mm -hmm. right? When I look at him, I see my father. Mm -hmm. I see an immigrant. I see yeah. this hard worker. Of course. And his other side is me like, no, fuck that. Anybody can fucking get it. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't swing at me. Yeah, was he cute? Huh, he kind of. <laughs> no, he had like these Robocot sunglasses. I don't even know what his <laughs> eyes look like. Okay, go on. This goes like He goes like this. He's like tries to swing at me. And mm -hmm. I'm like... And for some reason, like, you could kind of sense when you feel like you're in danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't feel that in danger, so I kind of let it pass. Yeah. Well, he tries to swing at Joe. Oh. Too. So at this point, I'm like, oh, fuck the whole immigrant story. This guy's trying to hurt us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm already intense, right? And mm. I'm screaming. I'm like, get your ass in the fucking car. <laughs> but I think that because I yelled at him, he already kind of escalated down. Okay. But he was still in my personal space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to go grab my bag and he's like, you made the mistake. And he's coming up to me. So I get up and I'm like, boom, and I push him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he kind of falls back like a cartoon. Like, yeah, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't fall down. He just stumbled back. Yeah, he stumbled back. You guys, I'm going to tell you this. I know a lot of y'all debate whether these David stories are real or not. <laughs> 
I saw video. <laughs> Hannah was filming video of this shit. It's real, guys. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> so, like, listen, I have not been in a physical fight since I got attacked at the gym if during COVID, mm -hmm. right? And, like, I hate this feeling because, like, number one, I have never felt good hitting somebody. I've yeah. never felt good. But, like, when you grow up in a bad neighborhood, you just have to defend yourself all the time where yeah. you always get bullied. And it kind of felt like that. Mm. But then after I pushed him and he, you could see, like, he doesn't want to fuck around anymore, mm -hmm. that's when everything's calmed down. Because yeah. it's like you got to let him know, like, you can't just come and hit me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's like, dude, that whole situation. <laughs> let me like, tell you, one of the funniest parts of the whole video that I saw <laughs> is for David after he pushes him, goes, you're a terrible person. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, this is the thing. You could tell... Just by that line alone, you could tell I didn't want to fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm trying to lecture him like he's a child. Oh, I go, I was like, you're a terrible person. <laughs> and then he's, he's getting in the car, or the old dude's getting in the car, and he goes, he goes, I fuck you, fuck you, mother bitch, two times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fuck you two times, mother bitch. <laughs> it's just like a goofy. Oh, but shit. When you look back at the video, it's so fucking goofy because this guy's trying to fight two young men. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then we're just lecturing him. We're like, what the fuck is your problem? What's wrong with you? Go home. Just go home. And the guy keeps, like, coming forward at us. It's like, just go home, please. I don't know what was happening. He was supposed to be at my house to get his car at, like, 4.15, and this fool wasn't there till like, 5 o'clock. And I was like, where is, where are these people, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad you were safe, bro. Um, <laughs> funny shit that happened after all that. So <laughs> when David first got to the house, you know, um, he came up the door and, uh, and Veda was at the door. So, and, you know, and Veda usually loves David. So I thought they were going to like give a little hug, whatever, say hi. But he opens the door and we have a little gate. So she's kind of like, Sam was like, mm, kind of got shy. I was mm -hmm. like, okay, whatever. So I go outside. I'm talking to Joe, David, they're, they're telling me the story. And then, um, and then I say, peace. Uh, you get in your car. I go back upstairs, and Veda's like, why didn't he say bye? I, I was like, oh, oh, okay, baby, hold on, hold on. I run down. I'm trying to flag him down. This fool doesn't see me. He drives off. I'm like, oh! But my neighbor saw me waving, so my neighbor's like, hey, 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 I think, I think Tim, whatever, right? Oh, yeah. David turns back around. He's like, what's up? I'm like, Veda wants you to say bye. <laughs> so Dave, he says, like, oh, fine. Joe's like, oh, my God. So you park the car. He comes upstairs. I'm like, so Veda's there. I'm like, I don't want David Kim to say bye. She goes, hmm. <laughs> I was like, no, what the fuck? <laughs> Did not want to talk to him or touch I, She's him. like, she goes, where's mommy? I'm like, you had me park my car, come all the way up. And she's like, mm. she's like mm. what if I left again? She goes, he didn't say bye. <laughs> I said, no, you left? You left again? She went, what's his problem? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that fat guy? <laughs> Dude, what the heck? Those fucking kids are fickle as shit, dude. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I was like, you you asked me to come up. Oh, bro, let me tell you. Speaking of Veda, man, um, it was so cool the other day. She, like, when we went to go film yesterday at the Anime Impulse Expo, um, before I left the house, now, mind you, uh, I had been playing with her the whole morning. Like, she fucking put me through, like, two workouts, bro. Like, we were just, at one point, we were literally just running around the couch over and over and over and over again. And then, uh, and then, like, jumping over the couch and shit. So that was, like, my cardio for the day. And then later, she wanted me to bounce her on this big ball she has. So that's my, like, my fucking arms and chest. I'm, like, so tired, right? And so... Now I'm like, I've been playing with her all day. She's loving daddy time. And I'm like, all right, mama, well, I got to go to work. When she sees me get dressed, she's like, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I got to go to work. She starts crying. She's like, I just want you to stay for five more minutes. I'm like, okay, baby. So I stay. She's crying, crying, crying. Now, mind you, as somebody who uh, loves just being uh, affirmed and complimented uh, and gassed up, I'm loving this. I like, I hate that she's crying, but I'm like, she loves me so much. It was great, right? If you watch his uh, desk cam, <laughs> you see Tim push Veda over so she could cry and come to him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Who did that? Only daddy can make you feel better. <laughs> so then, but I'm like, baby, baby, watch. I'm going to bring you a present, okay? I'm going to bring you a present. I'm going to bring you a present, right? So I brought her that fucking Squirtle, right, when we were in the anime section. And so <laughs> I got home right. Chia had already taken into, into bedtime to do stories and all that. So it was too late. I didn't want to go in there with a the present to get her hyped up again. It was sleepy time, right? So fucking I put the squirtle aside. I'm in the shower this morning. I hear Veda's little fucking pitter-pat feet. It's like 7 a.m. 
when she runs in. I'm thinking she's going to be like, good morning, daddy. She's like, do you have my present? <laughs> First thing she oh thought of was, do you have my present? <laughs> I was like, yeah, baby, I, I got you. She loved it. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it's it's dolls and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what the weird thing is now? We're, I, I kind of noticed this about like parents where it's like these kids have so much shit now. Sometimes you have to balance like, do I get my friend's kids things? Because like parents sometimes are like, there's so much shit here. Uh, I know. And so like I've I've done it a couple times and then I can see my friends like, oh, God damn it. Yeah. So they have to take it and put it in the closet because they have too much shit. I know. So now I'm like, ah, we're a little more better off than our parents were. So it's like. You gotta ask. It's like, hey, they need more toys. Do they like toys? We we tell people no more stuffed animals because it's just so much, yeah. right? And yeah. then, I I like I got one of my friend's kids some some uh, Christmas gifts, and I had to think too. I was gonna get him this whole huge thing. I was like, wait, let me think about this for a second. Mm. This motherfucker's their first kid, big family. Mm -hmm. This kid's gonna have way too much shit. Mm -hmm. So I got him a small thing. They're like, okay, thank God, because I saw all the other shit they had, and they don't know what to do with it now because it's like taking up the whole house. When you were a little kid. Did you ever get into like a hobby that every all your family knew about, so they only bought you shit for that hobby? Well, my, Asian people are notorious for giving bad gifts. <laughs> well, yeah, so you know, fucking oh. black garlic. <laughs> I tell you, okay, your parents are on another <laughs> fucking universe. I would always get. Okay, shout out to my older cousin. Uh -huh. Right, this guy, the shittiest gift giver of all time. <laughs> every Christmas would come around, I would dread it. Mm -hmm. This fool would fucking, because he's, he's like 10 years older than us. This fool would go to like Old Navy and get like some raggedy fucking clearance shirt. And I'm like, bro, just give me the five bucks. Yeah. I ra I, I'm I'd rather just get the fucking five dollars. I don't want this dusty ass <laughs> Old Navy shirt that's yeah. always the wrong size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always the wrong size. We would always get clothes that never fucking fit. <laughs> and then on top of that, it was the ugliest fucking thing ever. My, mo my mom was like, this will look good on you. And it's the scratchiest fucking thing. My parents... When they brought me my black garlic, brought a onesie for Q, you know? We take it out of the bag. Immediately, she was like, oh, it looks kind of small, right? Because Q's a big baby. He's big. <laughs> He's a big boy. And and my dad's like, um, oh, that should be like six to nine months. You know, I'm like, well, Q is literally nine months right now, oh, right? Oh, that's at the edge. Yeah, so we, it looks fucking small. I look at the tag, newborn is the size. <laughs> Your parents are the worst, man. <laughs> I'm so sorry. They try. They try. They try. <laughs> your parents, your parents just be fucking around too much, man. But I asked you that question because when I was younger, I used to draw a lot. You know what I'm saying? So uh -oh. everybody knew I was like little artsy boy, right? I used to draw and like color and shit like that. And so for years, all my family members and extended family members, like, you know, aunties and whatever, they would always get me little drawing tools, little drawing kits, color pencils, crayons, all that shit, right? And then one year I was like, can you guys get me something different? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. kind of have a lot of this stuff, you know? I have 872 <laughs> pencils. I was like, I'm more than this, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, when I take you out tonight with me, honey, here's the way it's going to be. Don't you talk back, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only going to interpret the music this way. Ah, fuck. Ah, but yeah, yeah I, we used to always get these, like, repeat gifts where it's just too much. Like, I know exactly what you're talking My thing was, like, when I started getting into, like, uh, like playing basketball and shit, mm -hmm. oh, fuck it, how many basketballs can a boy have? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> we can only shoot one basketball. Why well, fuck I got 17 mm -hmm. basketballs and shit, dude? Were you ever on the team? No, my parents didn't let me play. Why? So I played a lot of street ball. Oh. Uh, they didn't let me do anything dangerous. So they just thought it was stupid. So they wanted me to play tennis. And they no way I'm fucking playing tennis, dog. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just wasn't my fucking thing. I just didn't want to do it. Yeah. So I tried doing the wrestling team. My parents took me out of that. I Damn, tried, really? Yeah, I tried doing football. They took me out of that. What? So I ended up doing choir. That's it. And it fucking was way better. <laughs> I know. You loved it. <laughs> well, it was great. And you know what the funny thing is? Like in high school, you kind of like go through these phases where you're, you're you, for me anyways, I didn't want to do things because I didn't want to do things that will get me made fun of. So you want to do like the, the macho oh, shit. Oh, the cool shit. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And so like when I remember when I joined choir, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, I'm a junior. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. I got one more year left in this school anyways. Who the fuck cares? Yeah. So I did choir and I fucking loved it. Man, I was getting harassed by the wrestling coach to join the wrestling team. Oh, really? Because yeah. they wanted a little stout little motherfucker. Yeah, because huh? you know, I guess, uh, I guess I have like the like what would be like the build of a of a wrestler. Like, this fool got know. horny seeing you. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was this older dude named Coach Wiggum, Witham, Wiggum, something like that. Um, 
And mind you, when I was at Paramount, this is my first time being at a new school, right? And so I wasn't walking around all happy and shit. I didn't have any friends, so I was trying to like, you know, I ain't no bitch, right? So I was like, look, like low-key just mean mugging around. But actually, my rest, my relaxed face, people say it looks like a little like I'm a, like, uh, I've been told I can look a little intimidating when I'm walking around by myself, okay? Kind of had to back in the day, yeah, though. Yeah, but I'm little, though, so, like, whatever. But anyways, he was like, you need to join the wrestling team. You need to join the wrestling team. I'm like, why Why do you keep, why, dude? Why are you coming after me so hard? He's like, you just look, you just look mean. <laughs> so it's like, all right, whatever, man, fuck it. <laughs> I, I, so I went for the wrestling team, and, um, like, first week, I think I was doing the whole trials and shit, and I was all right. I was all right at it. But then one day I was like, I was walking home. I was so tired. And I was like, never mind. <laughs> you would have some <laughs> ugly ass ears if you were still in wrestling. <laughs> so it's a good thing you didn't. It's good for your future. That cauliflower ear, that shit lasts a long time or what? Forever. There's really? No, there's no way you can fix it. For real? Yeah, unless you chop off your ear and get a new one. Like that? Yeah. So like if the if the scarring thing happens, there's so what happens is it's like the, a fluid will build up in between your skin and like the cartilage. Mm -hmm. And then what they'll have to do is put a syringe in and then drain it out. But it's already deformed, so it's just less deformed. Oh. So that's why, you know, wrestlers, they put the little ear earmuffs things in so they don't fucking oh. scrape their ear up. Is that what that is? Oh, it's from the scraping? Yeah, so it's from that, and then it'll, like, blow the fuck up. So years ago, uh, during when people would do jujitsu, mm. people wanted that. They would do that shit on purpose because it's like a, it's like a badge of honor. Interesting. Nowadays, people are like, fuck that. I want my regular ass fucking ears. Yeah, seriously. And so, you know, you see somebody with those ears, like, don't fuck with them because clearly he wrestles and he does jujitsu or some shit like that. Interesting. It's weird as fuck. It looks gross as fuck, man. Shout out to my friend Nick. Shout out to Nick. Shout out to Nick. Yeah. <laughs> fucking disgusting ass wonton ears. We're, well, we're going to get some dick pics from Nick and we'll be right back. <laughs> Ching Ching, DraftKings Casino is bringing you only the best classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots, plus exclusive games you won't find anywhere else, all right? Your boy loves a little blackjack, a little 10, a little jack, a little 21. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and use code DUDEFOODS. New players get an instant deposit match up to $100 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. That's code DUDEFOODS only on DraftKings Casino, okay? The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www www.1800gambler.net in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly 21 plus. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Only void in Ontario. Eligibility and other restrictions apply. One per new customer must opt in and make minimum $5 deposit within seven days. 168 hours of registering no account. Max match $100 in casino credits, which require one-time playthrough within seven days, 168 hours. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash new player offer 2024. Well, we did the Anime Expo again. That episode will be coming out. Anime Impulse. Okay. What the fuck ever, man. There's two different. Anime Expo is different than Anime Impulse. Let me tell you something, man. I, this was way better. If you guys noticed the, the last episode that we did this in, the most miserable fucking time ever to the yeah. point where everybody came up. They were like, hey, were you there last year? I immediately said it was fucking trash. Yeah, I almost so I debated. I was like, uh, do I want to do this same event again? But then I remembered how terrible we just felt during that episode, how like just trash. Like it was like, you know, us standing in the soaking rain, no umbrella pissed off waiting for food so dumb fucking wearing like i don't know we were wearing like paper mache jackets and shit like we just the, did the not dumbest. Have, yeah. we were, all of our clothes were made out of toilet paper <laughs> we're so fucking stupid uh it was just bad so this year it was beautiful the weather was beautiful uh lots of crowd lots of food vendors this motherfucker dude interesting he ate stinky tofu yeah. multiple times, like a couple of times. If you guys don't know what stinky tofu is, it is literally shit in a square. <laughs> well, and not not literally, David. It's literally <laughs> shit in a square. Remember when we were standing around and we smelt the stinky tofu? It was so fucking bad. Okay, so I've, I've heard about stinky tofu for so long, right? Rotten. And the, the smell is not pleasant, right? But I've always oh. been so curious because, you know, I tend to enjoy things that 
um, are stinky or people don't like. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can't fuck with the durian, but <laughs> um, for the most part, I like, you know, I like funky cheese. I like funky Ugh. different. I like fermented shit, you know? Um, Ugh. But... So I was like, I need to try this uh, Taiwanese delicacy. Taiwanese, right? Yes. Taiwanese, Chinese, yeah. A stinky tofu situation. I heard Bart loves it. Bart is a fucking animal, dude. <laughs> he is a fucking wild creature. <laughs> so I was like, I need to try this shit, man. So uh, we had an order of it. It was Ugh. fried. And, you know, the initial funk of it, I could get around. Um, the initial couple bites, I had to take like three different bites because I wasn't sure how I felt. You know what I'm saying? I was taking my bites. I was like, mm, do I like this? Do I not? I don't know. I can't tell. Is it something that needs to linger? You know, uh, I'll tell you this. Even though the first few bites were all right for me, that aftertaste is it'll fuck your mother two times, bitch. <laughs> OK, it's a motherfucker, dude. That aftertaste is like, hey, yo. It's it it's that aftertaste of what you smelt, and it's there. It's 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 fart. It's you're you're chewing fart. Like, okay, I'll just say this: in Taiwan, I'm not even making this shit up. <laughs> in Taiwan, even people who live in Taiwan is half half. They're like mm. they love it, and the other half is like, yo, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. So if you don't like it, you don't have to feel bad. I yeah, was in yeah. Taiwan for fucking two weeks. My wife lived out there. People in Taiwan also have similar sentiments. I saw a couple mm -hmm. feed each other stinky tofu <laughs> in Taiwan. I was like, yo, are you guys <laughs> fucking after this? Because there's no <laughs> way. No way you guys are fucking after They're this. They're eating it off each other's naked bodies. They're just putting each other's butts. <laughs> and it's the same thing anyway. So like, <laughs> hey, don't wash your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> is this butthole or is this stinky tofu? <laughs> 69 doesn't matter to them. Oh, it's all God. the same. Fucking yuck. Oh, man. Yeah, it's it's not great. We had our cameraman try it or our sound dude, Andrew, try it. He was like, at first he was like, huh. And then that aftertaste hit him and he, he like, spit it he out. damn near puked. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's pretty <laughs> fucking bad, man. But man, Anime Expo is interesting, man. So many of you guys put a lot of money into your shit. Mm -hmm. It blows my mind a little bit. It's kind of fucking wild. Did you know it's frowned upon to buy your costume? It's like, what? yeah, they, a, a big part of cosplaying and dressing up is making your own shit. How do you make your own clothes though? That's hella hard. Dude, it's crazy. They fucking, like all the fucking Gundams and shit, like these are people making that shit in their garage. They go to, I don't know, Michael's and get like arts and crafts <laughs> supplies and they make their fucking costumes, dog. Can I get 86 pounds of steel, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they accidentally make a real Iron Man suit. <laughs> like, I'll just try to go to Anime Expo, dog. <laughs> some blasting people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, some people put some crazy effort in. There was this one dude that had like a little cart like you know those uh those dollies those moving dollies and he turned it into a little race car and yeah. he was drifting with it that shit was fucking wild it's pretty dope I, th I thought that was creative as shit and they kind of do it because it's their moment to shine because mm -hmm. what people will do is when they go out there they actually don't get paid for this i didn't know but they just want people to take pictures with them because oh, yeah. of all the effort they put in. And people are like, hey, can I take a photo with you? I'm like, Zam, this is kind of dope. They live for it, man. There was one girl with some mad cakes. Did you see her? There was, uh, you talking about, she was wearing white? It was like white. It was like a crazy outfit, though. She was a little taller. I, crazy. I was like, Jesus Christ, this one's different. I don't remember seeing the crazy cakes. I saw some very subtle, subtle, nice cakes. I feel like I would have remembered crazy cakes. I did not see those. I think me and Rick saw it. And you <sighs> see it. it was it was pretty wild. I'm like, dude, you're different. And you can tell everybody wanted to take a photo with her. Ah, of course. Oh, every, I wonder if people get into fights about that stuff. I was like, oh, you think you're so fucking cool? <laughs> if, if I was half naked, I would fucking get photos with people too. No, dude, it's all love there, bro. Every group has drama. There's always drama. Even in the night, churches have drama, dude. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> Bunch of angry people. That. Like angry ass folks in there. <laughs> so I wonder what the, like, the inner drama is, like, in anime. Like, what's, like, because people always be hating anyways. Oh, like, this, this bitch stole my costume design. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm always curious because mm. I feel like most people are positive, but there's always a couple of haters in there. Yeah, facts. Facts. We, we, were, we, should, we should dress up next year when we do it. Well, I, want, I really want to go to, like, Comic-Con. Right? And do an episode from Comic Con, but I feel like we get stopped so much, right? And also too, it's elbow to elbow packed. It's like it's like this. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what we should do, man. We should do an anime expo or or a or a con, a comic con, and like full out costumes, like head to toe covered up. 
you said, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that'd be fucking so wild. So people don't, like, our fans won't stop us. <laughs> what if people come up? Our costumes are so fucking good. They want photos with us. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, chill, chill, chill. We're trying to sue. We're trying to sue. <laughs> you get the fuck away from me, bitch. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? You are not a nice person. Yeah. <laughs> You're a terrible person. You're a terrible person. Uh, I think. I think. Yeah. If we do a con like that, we gotta go full out dress up. We, we should even find a fucking anime that has like a bigger dude and a smaller dude team. There is. You could be Naruto, okay. and I could be Choji. But then I can't dress up in full. Like they're gonna recognize me if I'm in the the Naruto. Oh. I'm talking about like we, we could both be full out covered though. Oh. You know what hmm, I'm saying? Hmm. I can be a cement truck. A transformer. <laughs> and you could be, you could be a, a, a fucking t- a Miata. <laughs> hey, oh, speaking of crazy costumes, dog, I was in New Orleans one time, and there was a dude that um his costume, he could, he could like roll as a car, and he would like turn into a transformer and walk around. What when, the fuck? That's when, fucking amazing. When he went to car mode, it would like be on wheels. It could drive. See, how do you guys do that shit? That's <laughs> fucking amazing to me. So we got to, oh, 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 or what if we're like, what if our costume is something that can come together to make one thing? Okay, we're thinking too much, man. Fuck it. It's going to be an uncircumcised penis. <laughs> circumcised. Ew. Docking? Gonna, and we're going to dock into each other. Oh, that's kind of lit, dog. That's kind of fire, dude. Yeah. All we have to do is get a flesh-colored blanket. Okay. And for mine, and I'll just stitch up the top. And I'll... No, 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 no. Here's what we do. Cover myself in a black blanket. Cover yourself in a black blanket. Our dicks are out, and we're actually docking. I don't like this idea at all. <laughs> and I think it's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, oh, we had these dick, dick bread thing. The, oh, yeah. You know, we yeah. listen, we do a lot. Of, look, I do a lot of, like, inappropriate mm-hmm. Like homosexual jokes, mm-hmm. right? As a straight man, mm-hmm. only because I know like people who are super homophobic get really uncomfortable. Yeah, they get they're like, oh, y'all sus. Oh, pause, yeah. pause, pause, pause. And right? I just like fucking with people like that Same. because it's like, chill the fuck out, man. Yeah. Like, not everything is so fucking gay. Any of you, well, who the fuck cares? Mm-hmm. This one was gay. This, this one was look. Okay, I'm on I'm on the same boat as you, right? Where it's like it was just a dick. Yeah, making gay jokes is just you know because we we don't care. Like, uh, it's it's funny to to joke about like. Uh, Sucking dicks or whatever, right? <laughs> but this fucking dessert was so dicky. It was realistic as shit. And it was like dripping condensed milk. So it was like a jizzy dick. And I was like, had it in my hand. I was about to like to to make some joke for the bit. And I'm like, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I can do well, this. Especially yours, because you had the condensed milk. Yeah. Like mine. I was able to do the joke that I did because it was dusted and shit, so mm-hmm. I couldn't see, like, the full, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was a lot. Of, yours was very different. I was, was like, this look, is much. It was looking kind of crazy, dog. It was a little much, man. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know about all that, dude. I can't. <laughs> it's a little too realistic. Like, it just made me feel uncomfortable. Because these, they, they, these people really, it had, like, the fucking, the, like, the tip and then, The like, underside of yeah, the penis, yeah. too. I was like, oh, this looks like my penis. Yeah, and then after I took a bite out of the side, it kind of started leaning, so it looked like like my dick, <laughs> it, was, it was it was crazy, man. I mean, look, we still ate the dicks, but it was uh, it was it was crazy. I mean, the dicks were delicious. They were fire, actually. They, they actually tasted really, really, really good. Yes, yeah, so good. Warm, hot. <laughs> oh, and the and the color on it was fantastic because they toasted it. It was great. Mm. Probably the best dick I've ever had. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Of all First the- time I ever had penis and the best dick I've ever had. You ever um, been asked, like, how much how much to suck a dick, David, so? Oh, I already know my number. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know that if you answer it fast, it's a little sus, but I answered it really quick. Well, you've probably been asked this question many times. Hey, man, $10 is $10, baby. <laughs> That's I'd definitely do it. <laughs> Listen, what are the stipulations, though, right? Like, are, is it going to be recorded? Are other people going to know? Or is it just me and my therapist? That's always... This. <laughs> or is it just me and my uncle? Because yeah. uh, <laughs> if it's... Oh. <laughs> okay, it's, it's really hard to, like, even, like... 
especially because yesterday with that whole thing, why am I sweating suddenly? I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm in an episode, like a movie, the movie Saw right now. <laughs> you have to suck this dick or you can't get out of this box. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's always the first question. So I was like, are people going to know? Is it going to be <laughs> public information forever? Speaking of public information, you want to hear something crazy? What? Mickey Mouse is public domain now. Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie specifically, yeah, yeah, I yeah. wanted to make a shirt with that. But the headline is always, Mickey Mouse is public domain. But yes, yeah, Steamboat Willie, anybody can fucking use it now. Which is actually kind of the cooler design of Mickey. Yeah, I love Steamboat Mickey design. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. Like I sent the same shit to Rick. I was like, he's like, lit, let's start making Steamboat. You guys have to make one. It's like, why wouldn't you? Yeah. It's so cool. Especially because Disney is so particular about like copyright stuff. They sue fucking anybody. The, the smallest person, they'll fucking sue them. Right. And I and I and I don't I was confused how that works because like didn't Walt Disney draw Steamboat Willie? Like, how does that how does it all of a sudden become public domain? I don't know. Did he draw it? I didn't think he? I think he got it. I don't think it was him because there's no other way. Right. Because right? if right. it was him, then, then they would he would have the rights to it exclusively. Right. So for I mean, there's Steamboat Willie is so funny to do. You just fucking blur out a dick on him, and it's hilarious already. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I was confused too because I've I was already seeing shit kind of pop up. There's a video game, a shooter, first person shooter popping up where the animation looks like a bunch of like Steamboat Willie esque characters, and I'm like, how is Disney okay with this? And then I saw the the headline. I'm like, oh, anybody can use fucking Steamboat Willie now. This is crazy. Until somebody wants to buy it from the person who owns the rights to it, right? Is that how it works? Well, I don't know how public domain works because you know how some songs are so old. That it's that, just public domain. That you can just use it without paying any type oh, of copy. Oh, it's like right? a, I forgot it was like a hundred years or something like that. Some shit like There's that. a certain time where it just expires and then anybody can just use it. Yeah. Oh, fuck. When, 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 does, when does that happen to Nike? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that Happy Birthday is not public domain? Google, who owns it? It's it's somebody fucking owns Happy Birthday. That's why like you don't really hear like Happy Birthday in movies and shit. Well, maybe you do, but they have to pay for it. Somebody made so that means somebody made Happy Birthday in recent years. Let's see. Let's Google it. How much you want to bet it's fucking Disney? I bet you Disney owns no, it. No, there's no way. How old? Um, if you, I just Googled it in 1988, Warner Chapel Music purchased the company owning the copyright for oh, Happy Birthday. Wow. Um, but I thought that it became public domain in the last five years or so. Really? That yeah. is amazing. Happy birthday <laughs> to Yeah, you. Happy Birthday is public domain. The former owner is Warner Chapel. Oh, 2015. It ended. Wow. Now we have to sing it to end this uh, episode. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Whoever you are. Happy birthday to you. Whoever you are. Happy birthday, dear whoever you are. Happy birthday to you. Did you ever do the And Many More on Channel yeah. 4? Yes, when we were younger. And then I tried it when I was older and people called me gay. So <laughs> I stopped doing it. And people in my neighborhood are very mean. And then after you sing Happy Birthday once, then you go, All right, everybody, now the black version. Happy birthday <laughs> to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. In Thai, to do you have a Thai ya. version? Um, yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Sengi chuka hamnida. Oh, really? Sengi chuka hamnida. Sanadanan uri keseki. Sengi chuka hamnida. Yay! I said, so saranghanan means the, you know, someone I love. Okay. And then keseki means bitch. <laughs> well, well then, thank you guys for watching another episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. Happy, happy birthday to you. Um, make sure you drive safe, um, Uber to wherever you're going, if it's your birthday and, and do uh, not take taxi from this company called independent <laughs> taxi. It's called independent taxi co it's in Los Angeles. Do not ever, ever, ever get a taxi from them because the company is also shit too. We reported them and they said it never happened. Fuck you. Really? Yeah. That's your fault. Why, why are you even taking a taxi cab in today's, uh, day and age? Because it was cheaper and it was faster. So the, the Uber line was crazy. <sighs> All right, y'all. Well, hey, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Independent taxi <laughs> call. Don't ever go in there. Fuck your mother bitch two times. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Yo, it's the dudes behind the food. Do, 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 do.